In this video, we will see how we can perform operations on all our array elements. So if we want to print, for example, all the array elements, or if, for example, we wanted to read the array elements from the console where the user is inputting these um, array elements. So to be able to perform um, an operation on all the array elements, we, we, need, we will need to iterate through all these array elements. And the best way to do that is actually using a for loop. Our for loop header will be um, like we did before, we will have an initialization statement. We have an integer value, which is i, that represents the index. And we are starting from the first element, so our index will start from 0. Then we are checking, is i less than the array.length? So we do not want to exceed the number of elements we have in the array. And the last element will be the array.length minus 1. So if we have five elements, the length is five. So the last element will be at index four. So we are starting from element zero up to element four. And then after each element, when we are done with the element, we want to increment the value of i. So we want to go to the next element. So we started with element zero. After we execute the loop or do the operation we want on that element, we'll increment i, so we'll be at location one and so on. Now inside the for loop, we will use a reference to that element using the index i. So our array name and in square brackets will have i. So we are accessing the array at location i. So we started with i equal to zero. So the first element will be at location um, zero. So array at location zero. So let's look at an example here in Eclipse. Let's create an array of integers. So let's create integer and then square brackets, which represents that we have an array here, not a single element. And let's call it numbers. And this will be equal, and let's pass an initialization list. So one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five elements in our array. We start with index zero. The first element is at index zero, and the last element will be at index four. Now, to be able to print these array elements, instead of having five print statements, I will have a for loop that iterates through these array elements, and for each element, we want to print it. So our for loop header will be starting with location zero, so i equals to zero. And while i is less than the array dot length, which is called numbers dot length, we want to increment the value of i. So we started with i equals zero, the index is i, we start with zero up to the length. And after each execution of the loop, we will increment the value of i. So what do we want to do? Let's actually print these array elements. So system dot out dot print line. And we want to print the numbers at location i. So what will happen? We started with i is 0. Is 0 less than the numbers dot length? The length is 5. 0 is less than 5. So we'll be going to print the numbers at location 0, which is number 1. When we are done printing, we are incrementing the value of i. So i is now equal to 1. 1 is less than the numbers dot length. 1 is less than 5. So we'll go and print the numbers at location 1, which is this second element. We keep going until we reach the last element. After the last element, which is at location 4, if we increment i, i will be 5. 5 is not less than 5, so we'll not print anything outside our array. So let's execute that and run it you will see that we are printing all the elements in our array in here. So again, any operation that I want to perform on all my array elements, I'll be using the same for header. I'm going from the first element at location zero up to the length, not including the length. And then inside here, I will access the array element using the array name and the index i in square brackets. So for example, instead of having uh, an array already initialized here, Let's create a new array using the new keyword. And this is an array of integers. And this will be five elements. So it will have five elements. And instead of printing these array elements, since we do not have array elements, I can actually read the array elements from the user. So to be able to read, I will initialize a scanner. So scanner, let's call it scan equals new scanner. And it will read from the system.n. If you did not import already the java.util, you can import the java.util.scanner and you will not have that error anymore. So what are we going to do now? 
we'll be asking the user in our for loop system dot out dot print line and we'll tell them please enter an array element or an integer if we want to display that in the same line that the user is typing in we can use print instead of print line and that will ask the user to um, print or enter a value now this value that the user is entering we can access it using the scanner so scan.nextinteger so we are expecting them to enter an integer so we can use scan.nextintegers now what do we want to do with that integer? We want to actually store it in our array. Where do we want to store it? We want to store it at the current location. So we are at location zero when i is equal to zero. So numbers at i, we want it to be equal to the scan.nextintegers. So the value that the user is entering here will be placing it in our array. Now if you want to tell the user where they are actually in the array, you can actually have here, we can have a concatenation with i. Um, let's say enter an integer at the location i so they know where exactly they are in the array. We will concatenate it with a column so they know where exactly they are in the array. And then the value that they are entering, we are storing it in our array. So let's try to run this code and see what happens. It's asking me, please enter an integer value at, at location zero. So if we entered one, now we are going to the second location, third location, fourth, and fifth. Remember, our array starts numbering or indexing from zero. And the last um, location will be the length, which is in this case five minus one. So the last location or last element would be at location four. Now, when I press enter, my program will terminate. And these values were stored in my array. Now, if we want to display them now, we can actually display them using another for loop. So for, let's use integer, let's call it j for example, and we are starting from zero. The same header, we have j is less than the numbers dot length, and then j plus plus. Again, since we are iterating through all the array elements, we will be using the same type of header. We're starting from zero, up to the length and then plus plus. What do you want to do? We want to print the array element. So system.out.println or if we wanted to print them in the same line, we can use i or the numbers at j. And then we can concatenate that with a comma. So this way we will be printing the array elements in the same line. Let's actually run this code and see what happens. So at location zero, let's add one two, three, four, and five. Now it's going to print it, all the array elements in this same um, line. Again, you can do any type of operation on your array elements as long as you are iterating through all the array elements one by one using that for loop. So instead of printing these array elements, let's say we want to calculate the total of these array elements. Since we are dealing with numbers, we can actually calculate the total. So what I can do is I can have an integer, call it total, before this for loop and I can initialize it to the value zero. Now for each array element, I want to add that value to the total. So what I can have here, I can have total plus equals the numbers at location i. Now this actually means total equals total plus numbers at location actually j because we are using the variable j in here. Once we have the final total after our for loop, we can print out that total. So system.out.println and let's say your total is and then we can concatenate that with the total. So again we are taking the first element at location 0, the element in the array numbers at location 0 we are adding it to the total. We're going to the next element at location 1 we are adding it to the total and so on. After we are done, so this is inside the for loop, we did not need the curly braces because we only have one statement in our for loop, but you can also add curly braces if you want to avoid any confusion. So this is the only statement in our for loop. We are getting the element at location j from zero up to the length, not including the length. And for each member or each element in our array, we are adding that value to the total. So we started with zero, 
we get the first element we added to the total, which is zero. We get the second element we added to the running total and we keep going until we reach the end of that array. And after we are done adding all the elements outside our um, for loop, we will be printing out um, the total. So we are still taking the input from the console, from the user, and then we are going to print out the total of these elements. So let's actually run this program at location zero. Let's add, um, have more numbers. So 10, um, 2, 45, 26, and let's say 70. So now we are adding these elements to the array. And after we added them, we are going to add these va individual values to our total and then we are going to print the total. So if I hit enter now, it will tell me your total is 153, which is basically adding all these array elements to, um, to the total. Another thing you can do actually, because you have the total, you can also calculate the average. Now the average will be the total divided by the number of elements. So since you already calculated the total here, you can also divide that total by the number of elements. So we can divide it by the um, numbers dot length, and that's the number of elements we have. However, remember, if you are dividing an integer by an integer, the result will be an integer, and that might not be accurate. So what we can do, we can cast this total into a double value, or we can actually declare it as a double from the beginning. Now, a double divided by an integer, the result will be double, and we will not be losing any um, values. So let's actually run this. Let's make all our array elements as um, different values. So 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. So your total is, actually this is not a total, this is the average. So we can print your average is, and this is the value. Notice we have the decimal point with zero because we, um, we are printing this out as a double value. If we want to have a decimal point, we can actually have these um, values in odd numbers. So let's try that. So three, um, seven, eight, nine, and 19. Now notice the average is 9.2, which is a double value. If we left it as a, an integer divided by an integer, the value that will be displayed is nine because we are doing an integer division we are, where we are ignoring the decimal part of this um, number. So again, if you are dividing an integer by an integer, make sure that you at least cast one of them if you want to display um, a decimal point and an accurate result. So what we did here, we just calculated the total. The total, we started with zero. We iterated through the array elements one by one. Every time we go to an array element, we'll add it to the total, and that's how we get the total. If we want to get the average, we can divide the total by the number of elements, which is the array size numbers.length. And to make sure that we are not missing any um, decimal values, we needed to cast one of these values to, um, to make it a floating point number. For example, the total here was casted as a double.